Hi all, Freeze Cracked here. Kind of a rainy day, and so I got out some artifacts and I thought I would talk about them a little bit. And this has to do with large, large direct percussion, hammerstone percussion mainly. And the concept here is from a quarry site in, in uh, central Texas, an archaic site where there's just bunches and large quantities of uh, lithic resources around. Uh, in this case, this one's Peternalis amoeba flint. You can see the cortex here, and it's got growth on it and patination. Um, when you see white patination, that's a desilication kind of thing. Uh, it, when you when you have something in a ground or a water environment where there's a lot of uh, lime or, or base material, basic material as opposed to acidic, uh, takes away some of the cortex and actually makes some porosity that, that looks white in the light. And you see that, and you see sometimes you see gloss patination on stuff. But at any rate, um, so here's a big rock, big rock. And it's been hit a bunch on both sides. And in looking at it, you might at first glance say to yourself, hey, this thing here is completely random. But really it isn't. Um, the concept in this case would have been to get some large flakes for the purposes of using as tools or for the purposes of further reduction to knives, arrow points, whatever. So in this case, they weren't after the core, they were after the flakes. And the reason I said it didn't completely random is if you look at it, here's what happened. You see right here, in this instance, what happened was is hard strikes were taken downward right here and right here. And then, flip it, hard st strikes were taken downward here. So then what have you done? You've created hammerstone platforms. You've got the, the pretty steep angle on both sides to where you can then drive in above the edge on that steep angle at an angle that'll give you a plane cutting through the thing and get you some nice thick, this was a thick flake right here, some nice thick flakes that should because of the thickness and the strength of the flake go a long ways and, and get you big, useful flakes. So that's the concept. Hammerstone platform, pretty steep. Drive in, bam, bam. And then, you know, get one there, just, just wherever you can. In this case, it looks like there was even stuff. Well, that came from there, but this almost looks like a little bit of setting up. Sometimes you see um, what almost looks like battering. <clears throat> and when you're doing big work, it's probably not battering so much as it is attempting to get off, just using that, the big hammer stone to get off the knife edge so that there's less likelihood of complete failure of the edge when you strike because that's going to ruin what you were trying to get off the thing. I absolutely love uh, wandering around a quarry site and looking at stuff like this. I mean, it's just beyond cool because this is my kind of stuff and you know, these I feel like these are my kind of people, you know, people like to hit big on big stone and and hear the the ear splitting pop like a firecracker and feel feel a big flake jump all the way across your palm and know that I mean, you know, it just it just it's it's great. I mean it's just dramatic, it's fun, it's cool. Okay, so right here is another large thing. In this case, again, you have a similar sort of treatment where, and notice how steep these flakes are. How, I'm trying to figure out how to aim this. Really steep. Because that's what you want. You don't want to be hitting on the edge, so you don't want them shallow. 
because if they're too shallow, you can't hit above the edge and get a good plane. You just have to be downward. So you need it steep and um, then just bang in on it. And you can see this is actually a little more organized in how it was done than that other one. And so there's the chance that the person may have contemplated doing something else with it at a future point or whatever. You can see the the little battering looking stuff where the edge was dealt with a little bit to bring it up, knock it off and, and bring it up a little bit for when they were driving in to get the flakes. And there's a big flake there and pretty good sized flake there. These were smaller. I did find nearby in this nearby this location, I did find some pretty small flake tools, but I also in the area of the location stuff found some big flake tools. And, and you can take stuff like this and get you the flakes you want and, in, and then refine the edge a little bit and end up with a big chopper also. I mean, you know, you can, you can use that core. Okay, so here's a much smaller thing. And this side isn't worked. And this side isn't worked. There's flakes taken off of it, but, you know, what it looks like to me on this case though is look at this you got a few flakes taken off the end here and then you have what looks like some battering on this end why would they have done that and then you have a couple of flakes taken here and in here just a few and then sort of battering on this end well, I think they wanted the flakes for something, but then I'm not so sure about what they weren't creating a useful end for like smashing something like a pestle or something like that. I don't know. I never, well, I never settle that kind of stuff in my mind. I, I enjoy like everybody else does um, speculating or thinking about what something may have been or what it may have been used for, but I decided long ago in college in taking philosophy 240 introduction to logic that I didn't want to leap to conclusions and have false conclusions in my mind. I'd rather not know and not decide and not be certain than to be wrong. Although I'm wrong some too, so whatever. Um, I'm a rambling kind of guy. So this is all kind of flattened here, sort of plano, and this is sort of not worked. But if you notice, this is refined edge somewhat here, a little bit over here. So again, it looks like, well, get us some flakes to use over here, but then maybe, maybe, there was something being done with this, kind of like along the lines of a digging tool, or like it's got two, two not for cutting and not necessarily for chopping, but more uh, a digging or, or hacking or whatever kind of tool. This is a different kind of rock. I don't know if you noticed, uh, but if you notice, it looks like there's a little bit of a layered look in here, but it also has sort of a translucent, chalcedonic type, purplish kind of color to it and everything. Guess what that means from this location? This is fossilized material. It basically, is uh you'll have to look this up stromatolite stromatolytic material uh bioherms old stuff uh, they still exist uh there's still such a thing but at any rate it's kind of a algal algal kind of thing or something anyway this broke i don't think that was intentional that looks intentional because that looks like a hammerstone platform that you can see. I think probably when this broke, they may have changed what they were doing, but you see these long blades taken from this hammerstone platform. That looks like some little thing was taken there. So long blades, Clovis, right? No. It's archaic. You know, everything that's a big hit and everything that's got blades coming off of it ain't paleo. Um, everything that's fluted ain't paleo. The, the, the old boys are not the only ones that knew how to hit big. Anybody that lived in an area that had big, ginormous, good flint laying around everywhere, they learned how to hit big. Why? Because they could. 
and and blade tech i mean when you got big rocks and you can get big blades you, you have any idea how great a big long uh, long blades are for things i mean you can do all kinds of stuff with blades they're just wonderful what is this well this has gloss patination on it and what i've read about that is that it you know you get fluctuating micro environments when this kind of stuff is is buried or whatever and over time you can get where some of the uh, silica either in the ground around it or from it can kind of dissolve and become amorphous silica in groundwater or whatever and then redeposit and sometimes you might have erosion and redeposition almost at the same time uh, electrical chemical processes you know uh, you end up etching it and plating it at the same time with silica and you, it gets shiny and it's not always because of where everybody thinks everything is sand polished no you know mechanical abrasion can polish stuff but also you can have and in this case you got a little bit of white patination at the same time you're gonna have both um, what was I gonna say what is this well that's broken this looks like they were making it into something. I don't know that this was going to be bifacially worked, but this is sort of a standard shape where it's it's more turtly, it's more convex on one side and flatter on the other side. And they worked it that way on purpose because it's, it's easier to do stuff that way. But I like that rock, it's got a crack in it, but. I tend not to work this kind of stuff. I tend to just say this sort of stuff if it's halfway interesting, but there's way too much of it in the world. And most people don't collect it. Okay, so this was knocked down and you got bam and bam, a little bam coming off of there. So again, you know, when you study this stuff enough, you can see the different, the different, the angles get pretty ingrained in your mind as to what angle you need to be hitting at if you're using a hammerstone. Probably what they were hitting most of this stuff with was um, uh, nodules that had cortex still on them, chert nodules, same material, chert nodules that were rounded and had cortex still on them because where this quarry was, there was not a bunch of um, other kind of rocks sitting around. There is some limestone. They could have been using some limestone, but uh, a chert nodule with cortex will work really well. It won't last that long, but it'll work well. Um, this it was a little bit of a problem. See, this is a little too steep. This is better angle. This is a little too steep. So this one, because of the steepness, bulbed out more and 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 divoted somewhat. It, it digs because that, that force, you know, builds rapidly. And if it doesn't have a good angle to, to go, it just starts blowing up. Um, and that's why... A lot of the time you'll see me redirecting the force you know if I got a tough rock and if I've got a flat edge or something I'll be hitting almost straight downward trying to get a, a peeling initiation that'll run rather than a, a straight in kind of normal conchoidal fracture type hit that'll blow up in tough material anyway don't know if there was any intention to use any of this but I don't really see any indication that it was used so maybe they're just after flakes. Yeah, I know. I'm showing too much of the same kind of stuff. This uh, this piece, I don't know what they were trying to do, but it could be that they intended to work this one, and maybe an end fell off or something. Um, because that's not. This was really turned, but then these flakes aren't very long, and this didn't really turn. So this is not really uh, hammerstone platforms to take long flakes. This is more like setting something up edging it to, to go ahead and use it for something. And a nice flat piece like that, if you're gonna make a bifacial tool, would be the way to go, it'd be good. This has got some gloss patination on it too. This one is kind of shaped like that other one, although not nearly as regularized, where it's, uh, you know, you see this stuff where it's kind of, it, it's kind of, bowed this way and then saddled kind of this way sort of common that almost looks like that edge was intended to be used for something like a scraper this has no such 
no similar refinement, but you're getting some big flakes off this. Gotta love the the luxury. This is like, you know, having as far as as far as tools. I mean this is like having, you know, your your Home Depot in front of your house kinda. <laughs> big flake. Knocked off big flake. Peternalis amoeba and bacon cavity with refinement in here for like spoke shave type scraping on something debarking or working a shaft down or something but i don't believe that this probably was intentionally struck off to create that concavity although they normally do it that way i think in this case because what i'm seeing here there's a uh, uh, concrete in there that looks like it had some porosity. What I suspect happened on here is that water was down in there and either a brush fire came along or or a freezing incident or whatever. Anyway, something in there made some expansion that caused that to pop out and pot lid and then so opportunistically when the person knocked this thing off they just went ahead and used that existing shape for the thing. I don't think I'm guessing too much or reading too much into that. I think that's probably what occurred, but been wrong before. This thing here, I kind of wonder if that was, you know, getting flakes, yeah, but I kind of wonder if that was intended to be a chopper. Because you do see a fair number of choppers. I've even got one I collect. I don't I don't remember if I showed you this. I probably showed you this on a previous one. That's a, that's a, a like an ulu kind of thing. As a nodule, but just the front part is bifacially worked to create this this thick, strong, disarticulating edge kind of thing where you know bust out bison joints or something. Uh, anyway, and the difference in the colors and the patination and stuff, this all stuff kind of came from the same area, but the difference in colors, patination and everything is in, so, in some cases the rock itself, but actually more the uh, the depositional environment. This, you can see this, uh, this chalky limey uh, cortex on it. This was probably, you know, in a formation and then came out of the formation and stayed in the area of the formation of lime for a while to get that Desilication happening. This is the Mac Daddy of the group, um, which I like. This is a big amoeba too, kind of thing. And as you can see, this is the side that they they did take some big flakes off of it, but they also you know turned it and got it steep to hit and get thick flakes off this side. So turn it up steep and bam, get you some big old flakes off of this side and be aggressive with it. And you know, that's the kind of thing you could make a big ceremonial kind of blade or something like from it, this, it would work. Um, I think in their world, they they had such great resources that they could make, they could just wander around till they found the perfect nodule for a given function like that if they wanted to. But I don't know. Uh, just a big flake. Secondary flake. Got some blades off of here. And then bam, knock this off. And it rolled out. Um, but what you see on here is you see that looks more recent because the uh, patination is the same. So that could be just something hit it or whatever. But there's refinement on this edge. And there's definite refinement on here. Can you see that? Hopefully. Um, so that's what we use as a tool. And <clears throat> I think I've got some stuff in my collection where it looks like it was intentionally done, where they would get a flake, when they hit the flake off, it did a rollout. And when you hit this ridge, the ridge always is more resistant to breaking and the flake runs out and you get like point, point ends on there. And it looks to me like they probably had a protrusion there and they kind of sharpened this because that always is good for getting a higher force load on that edge if you were wanting to cut through some hard gristle or whatever. Um, 
gee, I could start naming all these things the way I'm telling their life histories. Like, you know, oh, this is, this is, this is spread. Um, this is just some random flake that ended up with all that stuff. I guess I found it nearby or whatever, but this is from a dark Pedernalis amoeba material. Trust me, I've hit lots of it. Um, and it's been refined into a scraper, like a thumb scraper kind of thing. Sharp there. They like to take stuff that's slightly rolled and sharpen it because that's great for scraping, like hide scraping or whatever. Um, whatever it was they were going to scrape. <clears throat> Key thing though is, you know, I see stuff posted online all the time. Somebody says, what is this? Um... And what they want is you to tell them something they can shoehorn into a single purpose defined paradigm. Well, I don't think the old boys thought that way or worked that way. You can use every bit of this thing. I mean, you see a couple little flakes in here, like a little protrusion and maybe two flakes beside it, which I see a whole lot. Um, you can put a knife edge, you can sharpen uh, this edge here and there's your knife. Put that there, there's your scraper. Put a little point there, there's your graver. You know, call it whatever you want to, but they do that. Um, gee. That's all I had for the moment. So, bye for now. Free scratch.